Hi, this is Peter from the DJ Podcast. In this video, we'll be looking at five tips and tricks for Native Instruments Tractor Pro 2. Our first trick is to load tracks to their load cue points. Let me show you an example of why you might want to use this. I'm gonna drag a track from my track collection into a track deck, and you'll see that the play marker with the red line is to the left of the first beat of the track. So if I wanted to align the play marker with that first beat, I would have to press on the cue point button and have it jump to that point in the track. However, I can use the load cue point and one of the preferences in Tractor Pro 2 to make it so that every time I load a track, it will automatically go to the load cue point. You can see here that my number two cue point for this track, highlighted in yellow, is a load cue point. You can make a cue point a load cue point by simply clicking on the menu here and then selecting load. Then we're gonna go into the settings by pressing on the cogwheel icon up in the top left. Then we're gonna to go to the loading section and we're going to check this option, initially cue to load marker. I'll close out the preferences by clicking on the button in the bottom right. Now, when I drag a track into my track deck, as long as it has a load cue point, you'll see that it automatically jumps to that point in the track and you don't have to press the Q button to get to the first beat of the track. This second trick is an easy way to activate stored loops that you have set as cue points. You can see next to the play marker that I have a saved loop here on this track in deck A. It is highlighted in green and it has little flags on the beginning and end of the loop to show where the saved loop starts and ends. I can activate this loop at any time while playing the track simply by pressing the active button. Let me show you an example. I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the track and I'm gonna press play. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click this active button. You'll see that the eight lights up in green showing that the loop is active. But of course, we're not looping in the track currently, it's just playing as it normally would. So we're gonna go ahead and jump forward in time as if this track had played for another couple of minutes and you'll see that the loop is in fact active and will start looping once we get to the saved cue point area. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in time and here we are at that loop. You can see that the waveform is now highlighted in green and we are playing that loop. This is very handy if you want to maybe have an emergency loop at the end of a track if you know you're gonna need some extra time to transition from one track to another, or if you want to simply loop at that point in the track so that you can bring in another track or other elements, maybe in a remix deck. When you hit the active button, it's going to go to the next saved loop that you have on the track. That means that if you have multiple loops saved on the same track, it's going to start looping the one that's coming up closest to when you press the act button. Let me show you an example. So right now we have this loop set up, but I'm gonna go over here to an earlier part of the track and I'm gonna save that as a loop. So now we have two loops. And if I go back to the beginning of the track, click the active button and press play, the track is playing as normal. I'm gonna hit the active button and this time I'm gonna to jump towards the number four cue point. So I'm gonna jump ahead and you can see that now the number four cue point will be playing. And if I jump further ahead in the track, you'll see that then it's going to change and activate on the next closest track that is playing. So that's just something to be careful of if you have multiple saved loops on the same track. The active button is going to work with the next saved loop that is coming up closest to when you press the active button. When I'm beat gritting my tracks, I like to zoom in to the very first beat as far as I can. And that's great for doing the beat grids, but I don't actually want to play the track that way because the beats go by so quickly. So to get back to a more zoomed out view, I could hover my mouse over the track deck and hit the minus button a couple of times to get the track to a more zoomed out level. However, there's an easier way to do that, and that is by using the default zoom. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom back in by clicking the plus button. This time, instead of hitting the minus button, I'm going to hit this equal sign button. That will bring me to my default zoom level. What's great about the default zoom level is that you have the ability to change it to your liking. So let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna go up to the preferences by clicking the cogwheel icon up in the top right. And I'm just gonna move the window over to the right so that we can see it a little bit better. Then I'm gonna go down to the track decks section. 
and you'll see that this bottom option here, default zoom, gives us a nice slider with a numerical value to the right. So right now I have mine at minus 0.5. This slider goes from minus 1.0, which is all the way zoomed out as far as possible. So I'll drag it to the left here. So you can see it's very zoomed out. Or if we go to the right, it'll go to plus 1.0, and that is going to be as zoomed in as possible. So you can use this slider to find the exact place that you like it. And again, this is gonna be up to your own preference. You can also double click onto the numerical value and type in a number. So again, for me, I like minus 0.50 and hit enter to change that value. When you've got the default zoom setting to how you like it, simply close the preferences by clicking the close button at the bottom right. With all four track decks on the screen at once, the track collection view in Tractor Pro 2 gets very small. That makes it somewhat difficult to find new tracks that you want to add to your track decks. Thankfully, Tractor Pro 2 has a way that you can maximize the browser. This function allows you to see much more of the track collection and minimizes the track decks that you have. This function is most useful when you're mixing more than two decks at a time. However, it can even be helpful if you're mixing two decks at a time and you just want more screen real estate to see your track collection. There are two ways to enlarge the track collection. The first is by going up to the top right here and clicking on the magnifying glass. You can see that the four track decks are now minimized up at the top, but they still have some of the basic information that you'll need. So that's one way that you can get the maximized browser view. Again, you just click the magnifying glass icon up in the top right to exit. Another way is by pressing the space bar on your keyboard. So you can press the space bar and you'll get back to that view. And again, simply press the space bar to exit the maximized browser view. Our final tip in this video is the ability to browse your track collection. Currently I have the track collection view open here and you can see that I have many, many songs, and it's all just in one big folder, which is perfectly fine if you only really care about the latest tracks that you've imported, or if you wanna search through your tracks. But what if you want to browse through your tracks? To do that, you can simply go over here to the track collection area on the left, and then click the icon next to track collection. So we have a couple folders. We've got artists, releases, labels, and genres. Next to each of the folder names, we have a number in parentheses, and that is the number of individual genres, labels, releases, or artists. So let's take a look at what happens if we click on the artist folder. So we'll expand that, and here we have a bunch of different folders all based around the artists of my tracks. Now there's a lot of them here, so it would take quite a while to scroll through. One thing I will point out is that this is all based on the metadata. So you can see that it takes each individual artist field and makes it its own virtual folder. That's why, for example, Andy Moore here is going to be different than Andy Moore and Ashley Walbridge. Those are treated as two separate virtual folders. Now the artist folder here is just gonna to be too large to really go through. So that might not be as helpful. However, I only have 15 genre folders, which might be more manageable to go through. So I'm gonna click on that, and here I'll just scroll down, and you can see the 15 different genres with the number of tracks that belongs to each genre. This is great if you want to find any genres that you don't have many tracks for. For example, I only have one track that's labeled as electronica, and four that are labeled as hard dance. You can also sort these tracks differently than your track collection view. So if I go into Deep House, I can sort this by artist or by BPM, and this will not change the sorting of my general track collection view. I hope that you find these tips and tricks for Native Instruments Tractor Pro 2 useful. If you wanna learn more about Native Instruments Tractor Pro 2, be sure to check out the other video tutorials that we have on this channel and subscribe to get notified when new videos are posted. Also, be sure to check out the links in the video description below on how you can connect with the DJ Podcast and help support us creating new video tutorials. Thanks for watching.